bear markets, bull markets, hedging, blue chip companies, trading and broking. To most, the stock market is mysterious. We've all heard of the terms, but what do they really mean? The stock market is a term that conjures up a bevy of emotions. It can be associated with risk, excitement, wealth, ticker boards and trading rooms. For most of us, the thought of living the life you want to, whilst the market simply grows your money, is a pipe dream and quite frankly, an unrealistic one. Well, I'm here to tell you that if this is what you think, you'd be wrong. My name is Marcus De Maria and I've been investing and trading the markets for over 17 years now. And for about the last decade or so, I've been training thousands of others to do it too. In this three-part series, I will be taking you on a journey in which we peel back the covers on an overly mystified industry. I'll be giving you tips and strategies, meaning that by the end of the series, if you've paid attention and are willing to take action, you will have the tools you need to start trading too. Over the next three episodes, I'm going to be showing you how to spot patterns, see indicators, and even give you different strategies on how to invest and trade the stock market. I'm also going to be taking you on a deep dive into my favorite strategy, the Buffalo strategy. But in this episode, the first of our three-part series, I'm going to be showing you how the stock market works and most excitingly, what you can do to shift the odds in your favor. But first, let's see what the public think the stock market is. I'd go um, just like any other market. It's got a bad reputation, I think, but it's the same as any other market. People buy stuff, people sell stuff, that's all it is. Well, it's a building that's behind me here, and where they trade different things. Uh, a place to take a lot of risks if you've got the money to blow on it. It's really, for me, the pinnacle and what a lot of people think of as the forefront of capitalism. Greedy, um, bankers, and it's what led to the downfall of our economy in 2007. You can't have a primary market without a secondary market. That's its purpose. But I mean, I, I'm working for, for a company that went from being a private company to being a public company. We're living off that, so for sure it makes great sense for me. We're all familiar with the term market. Historically, it was a place people went to to trade one thing for another. Perhaps my cow for three pigs. This was called a barter system. Fast forward a few hundred years and people soon realized that it wasn't always easy to trade one object for another. What if I had a cow, but the other person only had two pigs? My cow is clearly worth more than that, but I want pigs. We soon realized it would be much easier to trade something else as a representation of an object. And this is where gold, silver, and other expensive metals come into play. A pig might be worth one silver piece, whilst a cow might be worth three silver pieces. Fast forward again, and we've replaced expensive metals with money. Now a market is a place that you would go to exchange money for goods. Maybe in a town market, a supermarket, even an online market. So, having established one half of the word, market, what about the word stock? Here I am in the heart of the city of London, and as you can see, this is where the stocks market originally stood in. Probably where they sold cattle, sheep, and so on. These days, a stock is more commonly associated as a share in the ownership of a company. Stocks represents claims on a company's assets and earnings. The more stock you own, the more of the company you own. In the UK, we refer to stocks literally as a share or shares in the company. As a company goes up or down in value, your part of the company will go up or down in value too, which will have an effect if you want to sell it again. So, put simply, the stock market is a place that you can exchange money 
for little bits of companies. Cool, right? Now, if you were listening carefully to what I was just saying, you might have heard something very crucial. As a company goes up or down in value, your part of the company will go up or down in value too, which will have an effect if you want to sell it again. Well, this simple sentence forms the background to the two overarching principles of buying on the stock market. Are you buying to invest or are you buying to trade? And investing can be simply defined as the act of committing money to something with the expectation of obtaining an additional income or profit over time. In the case of the stock market, it would be the case of purchasing stock in a company, for instance in Disney, with the expectation that this behemoth of a company that is Disney will continue to grow. You would invest at point X and leave your money in the company as an investment until Z when you are happy to take your profit or loss. Day-to-day -day fluctuations on the market or news of massive theme park successes or movie flops won't bother you because the idea is that you believe in the long-term success of the company. Let me demonstrate with this lift and this random number generator. I'm going to generate a random number 10 times. Now this lift represents a stock price and like a stock price we really have no idea whether from day to day it's likely to go up or down. With investing, like we said previously, we're not being clever, we're just riding the stock, in this case the lift. And we're going to see where it lands. In this example we're going to start on floor 21 and anything above that the crew here are going to award me one pound per floor and anything below floor 21 I have to give them one pound per floor. So let's see where I end up and I hope I'm positive. Okay I'm gonna generate a number now. Okay 18. Okay, so I'm going to generate a number now. Okay, 16. Okay, 22. Fourteen. Thirty-six. Next number is number 30. 38. 23. 29. 28. I feel like a yo -yo. As you've seen, I generated a random number 10 times. Now there were times where I could have stepped out and taken 15 or even 17 pounds. However, there was also a time I ended up on floor 14 or 16 losing five pounds or six pounds. But here I landed on the 28th floor. Not the highest I went, but still positive. And you know what? I still made seven pounds. So I'm gonna go and get a coffee and a flapjack. Now the really nice thing about investing is that it is so simple. All I had to do is ride the lift up and down and I made seven pounds. However, it is never an absolute certainty that any company will always increase in share price. And in addition to this, there was a way in which I could have made a lot more than seven pounds and that is by trading. So let's go back to the lift. Now on this occasion, I start in exactly the same place on the 21st floor and again, I will lose a pound every floor below level 21 I go and earn one pound every floor above 21. The difference here is that I'm now able to get in and out of the lift as and when I choose and I'm able to collect my earnings as I go. Right, next one is 39. 39, that's a good number. I think I'm gonna get out at 39 and collect my money. 
39. Next one, floor eight. So floor eight, that's a minus number. So I'm definitely not getting out there. Next one, floor 12. That's another minus number. So I won't be getting out there either. Uh, next one is 20. Okay, that's uh, 30. That's more like it. I'll take my nine pounds and that floor. Generate uh, 13. Ooh, unlucky for some. 40, the highest number yet. That's 19 pounds to me. To generate, ooh, seven. That's, that's the lowest we've had yet. I'm definitely not getting out at number seven. Floor 37. Okay, so this is my 10th go. This is the last one. Random generate. Floor 24. So you see, in this scenario, instead of simply receiving the same amount of pounds as I landed on, I have traded on each floor and how I've ended up with a combined whopping 65 pounds. You see, by choosing where I get in and out, I was actually able to get a lot more than simply going up and down and hoping that it's going to go up. This is the basic principle of trading versus investing. Investing is time in the market, or in this case, the lift, and trading is timing the market, or in this case, the lift. Now, I think I'm gonna go take my wife out to dinner with these returns. Before the break, we took a look at what the stock market really is. We took a ride in the lift and explored the difference between investing and trading. Most importantly, with my winning from the lift experiment, I was able to buy coffee with my investment strategy and a full lunch with my trading strategy. Result. So, if it's so simple, why isn't everyone doing it? Here we are in my trading room in London, and I'm here with one of my traders, Rishi. Now he's here all day, looking at the markets, going up and down, really all day long. So when he sees an opportunity, he's gonna get in. So Rishi, what are you looking at right now? Well, we're looking at a stock that has predominantly gone up throughout the year. We're looking at a year's time frame, and we're looking at OHLC bars. Ooh, what's that? It, it's when a bar, so each bar, each day, is showing us the open, the high, the low, and the close of the day. Okay, so let's have a look at one bar. So you're saying that one bar shows us the movement of the market during that day, is that right? Yeah, okay. exactly. So let's take this bar here. On the left-hand side, we've got the open of the bar. It then shows the movement throughout the day okay. between the high and the low. Right. And then the right-hand side of that bar, we've got another little thing here which shows us close. Okay, so in one bar you can see where it opened, the low, the high and the close of that day. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, so you're looking at one year I can see. Mm -hmm. You've zoomed in a little bit now. Um, and then, so what are you looking at? So, we never want to buy at the high. We want to actually buy when the market starts to pull back. So when it starts to come against the high, starts to move down so we get a better price. Okay. So I'm looking at buying in this. Mm, so interesting. So what you're looking at buying, it looks like it's coming down. Do mm -hmm. you really want to be buying when it's coming down? can be a bit scary, but yes, we definitely do not want to buy at the high. We want to buy at a better price. So therefore, because we have rules, because we have a strategy, we wait for a certain price. And it still needs to fall a little bit more before I get in. It looks pretty simple. It is pretty simple, if you have a strategy. Okay, so you wouldn't, where would you be looking to get in? So in this particular case, we're looking to get in when it hits that line. Right, so you're not ready. Not would you yet. place the order now? Nope. But could you place the order? You could if you wanted to. Okay. You could if you wanted to. You know exactly where you're going to get in weeks before. Okay, fantastic. Looks pretty simple to me. So um, what kind of a percentage return would you be looking to get on this particular trade? 
I'm looking to make anywhere between 15 to 20 percent per trade. 15 to 20 percent and how yep. many times a month would you be looking to place a trade? Uh, on average I get about 10 trades a month. 10 trades a month? Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Looks pretty simple. Could anybody do it? Anyone can do it if, again, they have the right training and strategy. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Moses. If you're thinking, wow, that's pretty simple, get me signed up for a trading account, well, yes, you'd be right. It's likely to be a lot simpler than you first think. But I would wait a little before you do that. Because with that example that Rishi showed us, we had the benefit of hindsight. Yes, he implemented his strategies and methods that he's learned over a period of time to spot that stock. However, stocks do have the ability to go down too. Now you will notice that I'm standing next to this rather famous looking table here. Now I'm going to let you in on a secret. I've never played on a roulette table in my life. I've even been to Las Vegas for two weeks, but I never gambled. But all that is about to change. Now statistically, give or take that little green number right there, I have a 50-50 chance of hitting a red or a black. On this table, if I can predict the next color, I will get double my money back. But if I guess the wrong next color, I lose everything I've bet. So, let's give it a go. didn't last very long. So what can I do to shift the odds in my favor? Before we talk about any strategies, we need to discuss the importance of shifting the odds in your favor. Playing black or red on a roulette table gives you a double or nothing chance, and these are not good odds. To a lot of people, this is what it feels like to trade stocks. But let me tell you something. These buildings behind me here at Canary Wharf were not built on gambling. They were built on trading and investing where the odds can be shifted in your favor. So let me tell you about something called a stop loss. A stop loss is a facility made available by your stock platform that enables you to limit your losses by a percentage you choose and by utilizing this fantastic tool you can make sure that the potential upside of a stock far outweighs the potential downside. For example, if you have £100 and you wanted to trade this on the stock market, you could implement a 1% stop loss. Let me ask you a question. If you were to implement a 1% stop loss on all your trades, how many times would you have to get it wrong to lose all your money? I'm going to give you a few seconds. Did you say 10 times or 100 times probably, right? No. If you've implemented a 1% stop loss on all of your trades, you would have to get it wrong 462 times. Have you ever heard of Ronald Wayne? He sold 10% of Apple in 1976 for just 800 pounds, which right now would be worth over 13 billion pounds. So if you manage to lose 462 times in a row, I would say you're unluckier than Ronald Wayne. We've learned 
that a key to successful trading is limiting your losses, shifting the odds in your favor, so to speak. But the ability to do this is not the only reason why I love trading stocks. The most compelling reason for me is because of the eighth wonder of the world, the effect of compounding. Let me ask you a quick question. In this hand, I have a bag of cash. Awesome, right? Well, it is awesome. It's one million pounds. And in this hand, I have one penny. Which would you rather have? I think I know the answer. So, back to compounding. The idea here is that you can make your money work hard for you. In other words, to invest your money, get some gains, and then reinvest those gains immediately so that your money is always working harder each time. The result of reinvesting your profits like this is called compounding your money. The greatest financial minds over the centuries have marveled at the power of doing something so simple. It's been called the Royal Road to Riches, the greatest mathematical discovery in human history, the most powerful force in the universe, and most famously by Einstein, the eighth wonder of the world. Compounding is the safe and sure road that luckily anyone can do. The best analogy is that of a snowball rolling downhill. The further it rolls, the bigger it gets. And that's what happens to your money over time through compounding. So, let's go back to my question. In this hand, I have my bag of one million pounds, and in this hand, I have my one penny. But wait, before you choose the bag of cash again, let me tell you that this is a magic compounding penny. And every day for the next four weeks, it will double every single day. Now, which would you choose? Let me give you a few more seconds just to think about that. Well, if you choose the one penny and it compounds, you would be better off because at the end of four weeks, you would have 1.3 million pounds. That's over 300,000 pounds more than the bag of cash. This series comes with a warning that past performance is not an indication of future results and investing carries a large degree of risk. You could make money, but you could also lose it. But what I will say is that there are lots of opportunities out there. You just have to take them. And the only real bit of advice I'm going to give you is that there are a lot of different groups and a lot of different people that you can get involved with. Follow them and learn from them. Get tuned into this information and benefit from the knowledge.